Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back, uh, happy to have back on the program, Alessandro Perilli, who's the general manager of management strategy at Red Hat. Alessandro, good to Hello have you there. again. Thanks for having me. All right, so it, it's, it's, we were talking, it's actually been since like OpenStack two years ago in Atlanta, the last time we talked to you, uh, you had joined Red Hat, uh, coming over from, from Gartner, um, you know, looking at the whole management space, looking at OpenStack and what's happening there. Um, so tons of announcements this week. Well, what, what's happening with the management portfolio from Red Hat? The management portfolio is really coming up in shape, I would say. It's getting really complex and articulated. We now have four different products in the portfolio. We have satellite, that is the historical product for management. We have cloud forms, that is the last product we were talking about when we met. And then we have Ansible, the IT automation company that we acquired at the end of last year. And then we have this new offering that is called Insights. Insights is a departure from our traditional way of doing things because it's a software as a service offering. So we're quite excited with that product. We entered the predictive analytics market. So you see there are a number of different things that are lining up. All right, so uh, Alessandro, when I looked at the press releases, but my initial uh, take was, wow, containers, containers, and, and, and more containers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> can you talk about how, uh, you know, how, how long you guys have been working on uh, some of these pieces and, and where uh, kind of containers fits into uh, the, the whole management discussion? Yes. So management clearly has a critical role in managing containers at scale, right? There are two fundamental aspects, just like in virtual machines. Do you want to serve containers, or you want to manage containers? You can do that in a small deployment, you can do a scale. And depending on that scale, you use different tools. So what we're doing here in the management portfolio is being sure that we support OpenShift, as an application that hosts container, that serves containers up to a certain level of scale in terms of management, and then we provide an additional set of tools, which is our management portfolio, to go beyond that scale, around containers at very large scale. So I would say that pretty much all our tools at this point already support containers in different forms today. Some of them are directly interconnected to OpenShift or are part of OpenShift, like for example, CloudForms. Well, CloudForms is the backbone, the management backbone for OpenShift. But then there are others that we have, like Ansible again, that can be used to manage containers at a very large scale. Yeah. You, you talked a little bit about you're getting into uh, SaaS-based offerings. Yes. Obviously, you've got you know community-driven uh, projects. You've got some marketplace-driven things. Uh, give us a sense what's uh, what's attracting customers to certain uh, you know, consumption models? Where are you seeing them? Uh, you know, what, what's helping them more? Uh, help, help us understand of all these different options and how they can consume them. You know, what are the trends that you're seeing from customers that you know, are, are helping shape how they drive management? So I'm just out of the stage where I was talking about these very topics during my presentation. And I was saying to the audience that we fundamentally see the line of business becoming king in the decision and the developers within the line of business. And we see that there's a growing demand for a number of different aspects of enterprise IT that should change, that are changing. There are three critical ones that I wanted to highlight on stage and still here. One of them is the ease of use, right? We see a demand for much more simplicity. You know, the enterprise IT should be in terms of installation, in terms of consumption, what I often refer to our social media as frictionless IT. And then there is this demand for speed in terms of getting the job done as fast as possible. And this is what is driving what we could call, I guess, programmable IT, which is another trend that I'm seeing reshaping out the expectation of the enterprise. And programmable IT is both at the application level, application exposes APIs, application interconnecting to each other through APIs, which is a nice story to clarify what we made the acquisition of Treescape uh, just announced this week. But also at the infrastructure level, clearly. The analysts, very many mentioned infrastructure as code as a trend that was growing, right? So infrastructure as code is one of the trends that you can 
put under the umbrella of programmable IT, and that's where Ansible makes sense. And there's three things, and the third thing is the demand for hybrid IT, okay? That comes from a need for modularity, composability, the capability to use only specific feature within, this, within a certain product to fit a business case, a use case, or to use different products from different vendors, not necessarily from Red Hat, to compose in a best of brief fashion what has to be the computing stuff, right? So we are shaping the management portfolio after this three traits, the three demands, and the trends that come out of them. So when you look at insights, software as a service is meant to simplify the interaction with the tool, but also simplify the consumption, right? So also Ansible. Ansible was chosen out of the many competitors on the market because we saw this common trait that was independent developers in the thousands writing on their personal blogs without any affiliation to Red Hat or any other company, writing about their experience with Ansible and writing consistently that Ansible was so easy to use, so easy to learn, so easy to implement. So that is really driving the way we're composing the management portfolio. You talked a little about hybrid IT, hybrid, um, and you talked about simplicity. We hear over and over again from enterprise customers, government customers, kind of anybody who's not a startup that says, look, the reality of our world is going to be hybrid in some form, right? Mm -hmm. I have applications existing and then I'm going to build new. Yes. How are you thinking about the portfolio in terms of that hybrid need from, from end customers in terms of you know, the tools that they use, how easy it is to consume? How much of that impacts what you're doing? So uh, I will say something that probably would be a little bit unpopular as usual. <laughs> the desire that is driving the shape, our, our effort in shaping the management portfolio is the one of bringing to the customers a consistent, a coherent single pane of glass to manage the traditional application and the new generation applications. Now, I heard in my past life, and even today, from very many people, experts that I highly trust and respect, that that is a myth, that it doesn't exist, that the single pane of glass will never work, it's just good in theory. And I understand where they're coming from when they make these comments, but I have a different opinion. I believe that there is a fundamental difference in the way we see the same topic. I want to use an analogy to clarify my point of view. The TV remotes that you have attached to every device you have in your living room. How many do you have in your living room? Three, four, five, yeah. Right. So I, I have quite a few in my living room, and I saw a lot of friends that have a lot of them. So I discovered an interesting thing, which is when they get up to three devices in the living room, they can kind of deal with the different TV remotes that come with each device. When they go beyond four, it starts to become a nightmare. And so the users start to look for something simpler to get the job done, the universal TV remote, which is the single pane of glass. Now, if you think about how TV remotes are today, they are not trying to be a gigantic tablet that has all the buttons that you will find in every single remote they try to replace, but they just simplify, make more efficient the use of all devices together while maintaining consistency. Plus, they add some value in some cases, like a programmable display, which was not meant to be in the original management tools. This is where I believe there is a value as a single pane of glass. Not as a full replacement of the original management tools, but as a more efficient way to manage them in the most used functions. That makes sense, makes sense. So really trying to, to sort of not give anybody lesser functionality, but give it to them, again, simplicity. Simplicity is going to lead to, like you said, less friction. It's going to lead to yes. faster decisions being made. Um, you wrote a great uh, piece, uh, it was a, on the Red Hat blog a couple of months ago. Your team had done a study looking at uh, running your own open, you know, sort of building your own open stack versus uh, leveraging what, what Red Hat delivers as more of a package type of yes. solution. Talk about the feedback you've gotten to that, because it really highlighted uh, where costs can be saved, where you're going to spend a lot of money 
on, on things that really may not differentiate your business, but what are you seeing in the market as, as the realities of that and, and the feedback you've seen from the market? So that was a very interesting kind of response that we got from the market, and I want to clarify one thing. That was born as an internal research project. We had no interest and desire or plan to publish outside, and it was really starting, it started from my desire to understand better what would be the total cost of ownership in certain conditions for a, a, a private a OpenStack based cloud. Okay? And we discovered along the way that there were a lot of elements that are critical in the calculation of a total cost of ownership and a total cost of ownership analysis that many other entities in the market didn't take into account. The most important of which was the cost of people, the human talent that you need to hire and retain and train and improve over time to get a very complex cloud, like an OpenStack cloud going. So we published the results because we found that they were kind of new compared to what was available on the market with a huge response in terms of curiosity and interest. We got invited to present on stage at the OpenStack Summit in Tokyo and in Austin and to a number of OpenStack forums around the globe. I think we presented to over 1,000 people worldwide so far, okay, which is not bad. And to be more specific in the answer to your question, a lot of people got impressed by the cost per VM that you have at the beginning of your journey because it seems so high compared to many other total cost of ownership analysis that you will find in the market. And they couldn't understand the difference, the, the gap, the delta. So we had to explain and spend a lot of time in clarifying that the cost to the people is what inflating exponentially the cost per VM, the most uh, the vendors usually don't take into account. But there is a huge demand to have additional information about that tool and to get you know, more data. Now we're being requested to create an additional version of it that calculates just the impact of automation, not the whole cloud management platform to lower the cost of an OpenStack cloud. So I would say um, it was it was good good outcome for the research we did. So, uh, uh, Alessandro, when we look at, in general, just adoption of cloud, for, from an analyst standpoint, it's almost easy to, to be saying, you know, I said, for the last five years, you could always fall back and say, you know, management and security are the friction and we're stopping customers uh, from moving forward. So, c can you tell us the customer that you're talking to, you know, how, how is Red Hat in general, uh, Red Hat specifically and just the industry in general, doing to solve that management problem, reduce friction uh, for, the, for the adoption going forward? Well, we're taking a number of steps, and this is just the beginning of our journey, our march toward frictionless IT, right? We are trying to, as I said before, simplify the offering through sassification of the application. So insights is the first step in that direction. We're trying to peak in our merge and acquisition strategy, the companies that are the easiest to use and to consume, despite being very powerful, enterprise IT. We try to simplify even the installation of the application. So if you look, for example, at CloudForms, CloudForms is a very complex cloud management platform, but it comes as a single virtual appliance that you deploy in 20 minutes versus a number of competitive solutions that can go as far as out six, 12 different tiers that you had to deploy over the course of weeks. Okay. So we are taking a number of steps, and it's not just that, we're also trying to simplify the documentation. We're looking at the licensing model. We're taking a full end-to-end -end analysis of all the areas of friction that we can simplify. And again, this is the beginning. We're looking into security areas, we're looking into a number of different areas where we can provide enterprise solutions at the management level, but still something that is much easier to what we had so far. It's, it's complicated. It's definitely very complicated. But this is what the customers are asking all around us, right? We cannot just ignore what they're asking and continue to deliver IT in the traditional way. And this is not just about Red Hat. I believe that the entire industry should push much forward in terms of frictionless setting. In fact, I see a number of competitors and partners that start to use the term and start to you know, present solutions that are simpler to consume. I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased to see the industry moving in that direction. 
Great. I want to give you the last word. Is there a, a customer story here at the show, a demo, or uh, some other thing that you say, oh, you know, if, if, if you, you know, don't see anything else when it comes to Red Hat's management portfolio, you want to make sure you seek this out at the show? I think that there are a number of customers that are implementing a few management components that we have in our portfolio. I'm not sure they are present today or they will arrive tomorrow, but Cox Automotive is definitely one of the guys that I would check. They have an awesome video where they explain very, very well how they implement uh, the different components and what is the business value that they got out of it. So even if they are not present in, on stage, you can definitely uh, find the videos and additional information about them. I would, I would really check them out. All right, Alessandro Perilli, really appreciate the update on the broad management portfolio here from Red Hat. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from Red Hat Summit 2016. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks.